What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. So, um, got to go out and get some more wood, some, uh, got butcher blocks galore that we got to do. And I got a few meetings that I got to take care of today. So it's going to be a crazy, crazy day. Interesting. You Texans, we had heard that Brian Flores was getting interviewed for the position, but it looks like they've already decided on who's going to be the next coach of the Texans. And it looks like it's going to be Lovey Smith. That lovey-dovey feeling I get when I'm with you. You don't know nothing about that, do you, boy? I never heard that song. Oh, my God. That was a jam back in the days. Anyway, Lovey Smith. Lovey Smith, who, and th this is where I don't want to get into to politics and stuff about it, but this is a case of you look at the resume. Lovey Smith was in the Super Bowl with the Chicago Bears, okay, as a coach going against Peyton Manning um, as the first black coaches in the Super Bowl. What you understand? Tony Dungy, Lovey Smith, Super Bowl in Miami. Prince was the halftime show. The Oh my God, I forgot about that halftime show. It was purple. Oh my God, it, it rained. It rained in buckets at that Super Bowl. This is before they put the, the semi-roof on top of the place. And you had Prince singing Purple Rain in the rain. Oh, my God. That was the best halftime show I ever saw. Oh, my God. That was incredible. But anyway, I digress. So, Lovey Smith, who was with the Bears, took them to the Super Bowl. They lost to Peyton Manning and Tony Dungeon. He also had them, I think he coached them from 2004 to 2012. He also took him to the conference championship and lost, and I believe he was in the playoffs two or three of those other times. They ended up winning their division, the NFC North, I believe three times under his watch. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Pretty good. I mean, we're talking about having, you know, what, a 13-win season, a 12-win season, 11-win season, Right. He then got an opportunity at Tampa Bay, which was, of course, Tampa Bay was the dread of the, the, the universe then. That was before they got Tom Brady and everybody decided to go there for the retirement party. Lovey Smith has been the defensive coordinator with the Texans, and you'll know that they've had great players like J.J. Watt and Rodney Clowney and stuff, and stuff. So now they're looking at saying, maybe we're going to hire in-house for head coaching position of Lovey Smith and they're working on a contract now as we speak but I also believe and this is just me personally that maybe the Texans and also I think the Saints may be getting a little bit of pressure from the NFL or are looking at it from the standpoint of Brian Flores' suit that we need to do something retroactively right now to try and say there's no problem here look Lovey Smith just got a chance but here's my problem. If you look at Lovey Smith, I know his coaching record is 89 and 86, something like that. It's just a little bit above 500. I understand people say, well, he's just barely a 500 coach. But when you look at the opportunities that he's had, understand that the Bears, since they got rid of him in 2012, have had one winning season. One winning season since they fired him. Over half of the seasons he was there, including coming over for a team that was, you know, like four and a uh, four and twelve. Over half of his seasons were winning seasons and in the playoffs. But yet, it's taken since 2014 for him to get the opportunity to be a head coach again. And herein lies the problem. I could look at a guy like, and you've heard me say it over and over again, Jim Caldwell. Jim Caldwell three or four years with the Lions had winning records. How bad have the Lions been? The worst year that Jim Caldwell had with the Lions was 7-9. and nine. Since they got rid of him, they haven't even sniffed anywhere close to 7-9. and nine. Let that sink in for a minute. So how you doing today, man? How's the new channel coming? It's good? It's good? 
you got a premiere at four o'clock today, don't you? I saw that last night, huh? Because I saw it on on YouTube. I saw it said premiere four o'clock today. Because I'm gonna be watching. I'm gonna check it out. I gotta see what happens in the gig economy. Was it like those three? Uh, what, what kind of dogs were those? Pomeranians? The killer Pomeranians? They're just small the tag dogs? He <laughs> wouldn't believe me. When, 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 but like when the people have like the big house and have all that land, they train their dogs to stay in the yard. Okay. So a lot of times when you see dogs in the yard. That or they get that wireless fence with the collar so when they get to it, they, 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 they know. Well, hey, most dogs, don't go nowhere over there. Most of the dogs, though, they're, they're just keep on themselves. Okay. So we got something really crazy to happen this time? Just the basics. Okay. All right, cool beans. So we're going to go get some more wood. Uh, we got a lot of pieces we got to go ahead and cut up in the workshop. So I'm trying to get back on that. We got to get uh, the, the, the drawer. We got to handle the drawers for your uh, TV stand. Get that put together. And uh, I got some meetings to take care of because life is busy. It's busy, busy. Hope y'all are having a great day. And um, we'll see you. Don't forget to tune in. 9 o'clock tonight, Eastern. Joe Blue Sports Report. Peace.